Hi, guys. Welcome back. 2024, one of our goals is hearing from you more and listening to you more. All right. We recently put a survey out. We want to start to share some of the results of the surveys, but particularly there's three questions that were very prominent in terms of uh, just when we asked, hey, like, what do you guys want to know a little bit more about? And we're going to share those three questions and we're going to respond, uh, give our best response here today. But Amen. these are all things that we're going to be exploring now in our new Academy experience that releases on February 1st. So we can't wait to share these three questions, but also our responses to them. Yeah. And um, consider joining our new Academy. All of our details that we're going to be talking about in this podcast are right at the end of the podcast. So, and you can learn a little bit more about our new Academy. You're definitely going to want to stick around and hear about those details and join us. All right, guys. See you in there. See ya. Hi, guys. Welcome back. Awesome. We've been listening to you guys. It's one of our goals here in 2024 is to really hear what you guys have to say. We yes. put a survey out. And we're going to be talking about that survey because you guys have given us some awesome feedback yeah and if you haven't that survey haven't yet that survey is still open and so you can click into the show notes and you can give your feedback because we want to hear from you we want to make sure that we're given information and discussions that are really pertinent to your yeah we journey want, here we want right into it okay so listen guys we have three pillars of our new academy we have all these brand new things coming out which i'm really excited about mm -hmm. um our new academy we're gonna it's gonna be super affordable mm-hmm and we're going to have a free version of it. I guess you would call that a free version too. Yeah, you can actually go to our new website right now. So we just released mm -hmm. our updated website, catholiccoaching.com or metanoiacatholic.com. And you can click on the Academy. You can see the different levels that you can get access to and see how affordable it is. I encourage you to go check that out. But the survey that we're going to be talking about actually addresses th these three pillars yes. that we help you to engage within the Academy. What yeah. are those three pillars? Well, okay. So, I wanna, what I wanna, do you want to say? I want... <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Keep trying to tell me what to All say. Right. Okay. All right. So what I'm trying to say is that it has taken about five years for us to land on these three pillars. These three pillars have kind of always been there the mm -hmm. whole time. It's like one of those moments where you look back and you're like, ding, 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 like starting to make all the connections. And you're like, oh, yeah, we created that in like the first week. And then we created that in the first week. And then we talked about this in the mm -hmm. first month or two. And it's been a flowering. So, yes, it has been a flowering. So we have these three pillars that we've landed on. We're happy to tell you guys about them. And the three pillars are important here yes. because you have to engage all three of these to really engage in, in, in advancing God's kingdom, okay? Mm -hmm. And advance in your growth and holiness. Respond to that universal call to holiness. Respond to the Great Commission to continue to advance God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. You engage these three pillars, it's key. And and you can't do them by themselves. Like, mm -hmm. well, you can. I mean, there have been people who've, who have done each one of them by themselves, and that, that's their particular lane, which is great because they do that really well. But what we have found in our all five years <laughs> of being coaches, you know, but we found that there's bits and pieces of all three that, need to be intertwined in order to, I think, advance the kingdom um, it, quickly and efficiently. Like, I, I think I think we can kind of focus on one pillar and then leave out another, but really what we try to bring to the table is all three of them combined. Yeah. So here they are. Okay. So the first one is what we call unique design. You've heard us talk about it before, but we want to help you in the new academy engage your unique design. And what is unique design? Uh, unique design is where we discover the gifts that we bring to the kingdom, right? What are you good at? What are you talented at? What are the weaknesses that you have that keep you humble? That's important to know those things too. It's part of your unique design. And then also like, what's our special place in the body of Christ, right? So mm -hmm. it's exploring that, engaging that. That's key to advancing God's kingdom. The second, second one. Can I go? Go ahead, babe. Um, it's through our unique mission. Now, this is distinct from unique design. A lot of people ask us, um, what is the distinction between mm -hmm. the two? This is really the aim of mm -hmm. the unique design. So once you kind of uncover those strengths and those gifts that you bring to the kingdom, how do we aim it? What, what are we aiming it towards? Mm -hmm. You know, like what is, 
what is the direction of this? Our unique mission is where we discover the direction, purpose, and how God reveals himself to the world through us and our lives. And in such a unique way. A unique and unrepeatable way. Yes. In all of eternity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you look at the lives of the saints and they do that very well. Mm -hmm. They're all very unique, all have very unique missions. Yeah, and I think we get a glimpse into what each saint's unique mission is by what they're the patron of, right? So they're not the patron of everything. They've got a particular mission that they reveal, okay? And that's why they're considered patrons in those areas. And can finally, we have our unique battle, Mm. right? And that unique battle is where we discover how God gives us customized trials, Right? They may not necessarily feel like gifts, but he's giving them to us uh, to draw us deeper into relationship with him, to grow, uh, grow stronger in grace, and, and also prepare us for heaven while also advancing our mission here, his mission here on earth. Mm-hmm. Yep. So there you have it. We have the three, unique design, unique mission, and unique battle. And I want you guys to think of a three-legged stool. A two-legged stool will fall over, mm-hmm. unless if you're really good at balancing, I don't know. Uh, is that possible? You there there might be some stools, aerodynamic yeah, you need to have your things that I have on done. the ground. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, but it's a three legged stool. It's like if you remove one of these pillars, they, it can fall over pretty easily. Mm-hmm. You know, so like I remember discussing this with our team and one of our team members said, yeah, I kind of knew what my mission was. Like I, I knew what direction I wanted to go and I knew what direction the Lord was kind of calling me into, mm-hmm. but I didn't know my unique strengths. Mm-hmm. And I really didn't know my unique battle and and how to engage that battle of the mind specifically mm-hmm. and work through those elements. So like you can have one of these um, or even two, but if you kind of remove the other one, it still, it remains incomplete. Yeah. You got to be strong in all, all areas or else your, your, your stool is going to topple over here. Okay. So uh, we put this survey out. And in each one of these, we asked people, okay, like, what do you want to grow in more, right? Mm-hmm. And so we almost had a one-third, one-third, one-third split in yeah. terms of people saying unique design, unique mission, unique battle. And then based on what they asked or what they answered, we said, okay, what is a struggle or a question that you have uh, about, you know, thriving or engaging this pillar? And what we want to do is share the top three responses, right? One from each one of those pillars. And then we want to respond to those questions here uh, and just know this. We go so much deeper and get so much more practical uh, and walk with you in answering these questions in the academy. And that's February 1st. That's when that's going to be, that new academy is going to be yep. open for enrollment. Okay. Yes. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Go check it out on uh, catholiccoaching.com. Yeah. I mean, I, and I would love to hear what you guys think too. Could we put the survey in the show notes? We already said we're going to put the survey in the show notes. All right. So go take that survey It'll and find be there. out. It's literally t- under two minutes for you to take this survey. So, um, yeah, we'd love to hear what you want to hear more of. Okay. All right. So let's get into it. Let's do it. Let's start with the unique design uh, pillar here and, and, and the question. So the first question for the u- unique design pillar was, surprise, surprise, how do I know my talents? How do I know my talents? Um. And there's a couple of premises here that are often behind this or beliefs that somebody might hold behind this question that make it difficult to address this question, okay? Or a couple of things. One of the first things that that, that I, I see is that we're often so close to our talents mm-hmm. and the things that we're good at that we don't even recognize them, mm-hmm. okay? So it's kind of like missing the forest for the trees, so to speak. Uh, we just... we. It just comes so naturally for us that it doesn't even feel very special Mm -hmm. or distinct, right? But we're often quite quick to recognize them in other people, right? Because other people's talents are very diverse and they, we can see, we we acknowledge them, especially when we, when we acknowledge some sort of complementarity that they, that they provide to our lives. Okay. And another premise here is like, I I have a, most people have a sense of what they do well, Mm -hmm. Right. But what they often lack is just a language to be able to communicate effectively to somebody else what they do well in a way that they like find like meaningful or mm-hmm. they, they can see it as really truly a gift. And when I'm, when I'm coaching clients on this a lot of the time um, and we're exploring some of the unique design elements and we're getting into talents, I love being able to tell a client when they share something that's like, hey, you know, I'm really good at, you know listening in this situation or teaching people in this topic, 
I, or, or teaching goodness gracious, you know, middle schoolers, I love being able to tell them, hey, you know, not everybody's that good at that. Like the fact that it comes very easily to you, that's something in, to, to just notice here. Yeah. But not everybody's really good at those things. Um, so I, I think that both of these, these call them, call them uh, shortfalls, is that, like I, I'm so close to it that mm-hmm. I don't see it or I lack a language for it, can be addressed through some guided reflection and also some helpful assessments. And I love starting with the assessments and doing some of the guided reflection off of that. You don't have to start with assessments, right? Uh, You can just start by asking some good questions. We'll get into that in here in a moment. But I prefer starting with assessments because the gift that I've found that assessments give and the assessments that we use often are Strengths Finder. That's a great one that's out there. Uh, The Temperaments Assessment that we offer, we've been doing a lot of podcasts on that. You can start to identify talents through that. But even M-Code, Motivation Code, you can, even though that one's really looking at your motivations, one of those five elements of a unique design, you can start to draw some talents, uh, some talented ways, some contributions even from that assessment. What I love about the assessments and the reports is it starts to provide that language that we're lacking. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it starts to give us... Uh, at least a foundational tool that we can use to, t- to explore what I like to say points of resonance in our lives, okay? Mm-hmm. So it's helpful when somebody can tell us what they see we're good at, okay? And, and, and in some ways, it's almost like the assessment is somewhat of an expert because it's collected data over over time and it starts to see patterns of habits and things like that over, you know, Strengths Finders had like over 30 million people take this assessment, and so there's some strong data behind it. But Strengths Finder, you get that assessment and says, hey, these are the things that based on your responses, you probably do pretty well. Now, we're fearfully and wonderfully made. And we are so unique that, that can, can we really expect a report to tell us what we're good at definitively? No. But it can start to narrow it down a little bit. And it can start to give us some language to be able to communicate what we're good at. Um, in ways that maybe we're lacking in the moment, all right? Mm-hmm. So I love being able to take people through their assessment and just ask a simple question. Okay, as you read through some of the results here that are talking about your talents, your gifts, where are you finding a point of resonance? Where is something ringing true in you? Where you're just like, wow, that lands really well. Like, I can really, I can really claim that. That's, yeah, I, I definitely... I am really good at empathy Mm -hmm. or I am really good at putting plans together or I am really good at arranging things or I am really good at at being decisive. And then when you can start to explore those points of resonance, you can also start to reflect back on times in your past where it's just like, okay, well, yeah, I can see where my strategic talent showed up here Mm -hmm. or I can see where my decisiveness showed up here. Or just throughout the dates, like like not even just in your past, but like as you're moving forward. Oh, okay. Yes. That's where that's showing up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the beautiful part about it is as you start to name this, as you start to have language and it becomes, more, you become more conscious of your talents. Mm-hmm. When opportunities present themselves to use those talents, you're more apt to say yes. All right. Because you know that it's not going to be demanding something of you that you can't do excellently. And everybody wants to be doing what they do best. Can I add one more thing to this? I think this is another premise that I and I want to address it fairly quickly here is that I think there's people, especially Catholics, Christians, like feeling like it's boastful to like to say, oh, I'm Mm -hmm. good at that. And oh, that I'm gifted in that area. And I think that's. Um, something that kind of helped me get through that process because I certainly had that thought was, was that God wastes nothing Mm -hmm. and that he gave us gifts and talents for a reason and it, and they were not to be buried. And just to think about that parable of burying your talents. Yeah. Really happy you brought that up because that can very quickly go a, a, a way of false humility right? Mm -hmm. And it takes us out of gratitude. Yeah. It also operates from this premise that we haven't received these as gifts from God, right? If you have a gift, God wants you to use it. If there's anything we can pull from that parable, he desires that nothing be wasted. Nothing Mm -hmm. is buried. All these things are brought forward and actually brings tremendous glory to God to claim these gifts that he's given you and then use them and invest them and 
it, it, that's how that's how you've been uniquely called to advance this kingdom, which kind of like starts to get us into even the unique mission aspect of mm-hmm. it. I, I love the complementarity, how unique design starts to even direct you or, or inform how you consider your unique mission here as well. Yeah. But I do want to talk a little bit more about unique design. Sure, let's do it. It's area of effectiveness. So like as as somebody, if somebody hasn't taken any of the assessments, what are some questions that we can ask them just to kind of get their mind mm-hmm. going and being like, oh, what, you know, let's just say you've been living under a rock for the last 30, 20 years, however long you've been alive. And you're like, I have no idea what I'm good at. Mm-hmm. You could ask people around you, first of all. I think that is like people who are closest to you. Hey, it's very helpful. What have you noticed that I'm good at? Because that kind of counters that that um, thought where it's like mm-hmm. I'm too close to it. Right. Yep. Um, but also you can think about compliments that people have given to you. Maybe mm-hmm. even compliments that have stuck with you and you're like, oh, that's interesting. Um, or you can ask yourself, what do I learn and retain easily? Mm-hmm. That's another thing. And it doesn't have to be a subject matter. It could be like... I learn how to play sports easily or something like that, right? So there's there's that element there too. I learn quickly. I have very high comprehension like mm-hmm. and, and retention of what I pick up on. Yes. That's, that's something that I've, I've recognized in myself over the years. And, and I remember my father always affirming me in that and being like, you just... You remember stuff. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think it's a melancholic. It's not all, it's not all useful. It's a melancholic trait <laughs> too because our little daughter does that too. Yeah. So, or maybe she just got it from you. Oh gosh. That well, skill. You know what? Unique design passes through the blood, blood lines, right? So it's, it's part of our DNA in a lot of ways. So, um, so yeah, those questions, I think those are great self-reflective questions even if you don't want to jump into an assessment but you can just kind of ask some of those questions and really what that starts to do is explore those, those three E's. Where are you effective? Mm. Where are you enthusiastic? And where are you excellent with ease? So it's kind of like four E's, but excellent with ease. Mm-hmm. It's easy to be excellent. Yeah. Those, we would say, are, are some areas of, of talent. Mm-hmm. So okay. effectiveness, just to do that again, like where are you effective? Where have you created an effect, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Am yes. I saying that right? You're, you're creating, yeah. Okay. Um, and then where where are you enthusiastic? Where where do you kind of like come alive? Mm-hmm. You know, even if it's just trite, even if you think it's trite, if you think it's small, what areas do you come alive in? And then what are what do you excel in easily? Right? Like what are you? It's easy for you to be excellent. Easily, in. easy to be excellent. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's almost like stepping into a current with your canoe that already has momentum in the direction you want to go. That's what it's like in ter- when you're operating in areas of talent. Beautiful. Cool. Okay. On to so the next. So moving on, moving on. Let's talk about, what was the question, the top question here for a unique mission, Erin? Um, oh, it was just, how do I know what my mission is? <laughs> it's like, I think that. How do I know my talents? Yeah. How do I know my mission? And, and again, our unique mission is our unique, unrepeatable way that God reveals himself to the world through you. Just think of the saints. Think of what they're patrons of. St. John Vianney. Like, look at his story, but then know why he's the patron saint of Paris priests. You can yeah. see that in a story. There's a there's a consistent thread of excellence in priesthood. And mm-hmm. being, that pre, being that example where the church says, okay, this is what he's revealed to the world, a, a, a standard of excellence for what it means to be a parish priest. Mm. But I think what's so interesting about that is it's a series of patterns. It's mm. like patterns. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, you you were really effective in this area mm-hmm. and you were excellent in this area and yeah. enthusiastic about this area. Do you see how it's tying in to the unique design? Yeah, God gives us, certainly to fulfill our unique mission, he gives us the unique design to be excellent at it, to do mm-hmm. it well, right? And so this is where those two pillars can really start to inform one another, all right? Whenever I'm helping somebody to discern unique mission, I always love starting with unique design, okay? Because your unique mission is not going to demand something from you that is a talent that God has not given to you. That's but, kind of a discernment point. But Matt, what is unique design? This is a side note. What does unique design look like without a unique mission? I, I think it can very much turn into navel gazing. Okay, tell me more. Well, okay, so it's unique design is like you claim these things, but you don't necessarily have a direction for them, mm. okay? And so, th- I mean, that that's really it. Like, y- it's it's kind of like um, it, it just lacks lacks intention. And, and it's hard to imagine unique design without unique mission. Right. And the reason why it's hard is because to, to imply that you even have a design means that there is a designer. 
Mm-hmm. And designers don't design things without intention. Yes. Yeah. So we can reflect on the or design. Or end goal, right? An <laughs> end in mind. Exactly. Yeah. Like we can we can look at a blender, the design mm-hmm. of a blender, and what it, and we can understand that the intention of the designer was for it to blend mm-hmm. foods or something, make smoothies that are delicious. Mm-hmm. So when we reflect on unique design, we can start to see the purpose of the designer, and with that, we can start to understand mission. It's almost as if so. Unique design without unique mission. This is why I'm, I'm focusing on this because we are tying all of these pieces in together. Yeah. But it's almost like as if you give somebody who's on a journey or pilgrim like all of these tools and weapons to use along the way. Like here's a flashlight and here's all this. And then, and then you just go, okay, there is no mission. There is no destination. They're just, not going to move. <laughs> just going to stand there <laughs> and, and like, I don't know, shine a flashlight on a rock or something and not, you know, whatever. But well, they're just not going to engage any of those, those, it's almost those things re- that they've been given. It's like ridiculous to think about it. So this is yeah. why we're like, no, they are, they're distinct from one another because unique mission is the aim is the destination that you're getting to but they do need one another okay yeah okay so when, when it comes to answering this question how do i know my unique mission all right what are some of those beliefs that are behind the scenes that can make it make this harder than it needs to be i think people think of the word mission and they're like i i have to know the full picture right now mm-hmm. and it has to be big it's yep. like mission like okay, it has yeah. to be super big I have to know the whole plan, the full picture mm-hmm. right now. Yep. And, it, and it's, it's got to be like, I have to have certain certainty yeah. of the entire journey before <laughs> I step off. Right. We've talked about this in the past, but I, I, I want to focus on what you just said about the, um, you know, that it's got to be big because there's one survey response. I read through it and I was just like, I have to, I have to email this woman. Uh, her name is Claire. And one of the things she shared was, okay, like I'm a mom of four. And, and so like, I know my unique mission is being like, it's here in the Amen. family. It's focused here. And it's just like, and to think that, it, and to think that it's got to be this huge thing almost like takes my focus off of mm. what is, what is obviously a, a, an obligation or needs to take some sort of priority here in this season of my life. And I just, I was so happy to hear that because we can often go to this place of mission being the bag, right? The big, hairy, audacious goal. And you see this being really big in, in the, uh, in the secular coaching world. And and I admit that this is something that like in the beginning, it was just like, no, everybody's got to like, it's got to stretch you. Don't just like stay ordinary and, and things like that. But the beautiful thing is, is that yes, you can have, every single one of us has this unique thing that we're called to be the patron saint of, Mm. all right? That's when we're talking about what your unique mission. So cool. But it doesn't ever demand that you neglect the obvious responsibilities that we know. We know through revelation and we know through natural law are ours to, to, to do and do excellently. For example, like your unique mission is never gonna call you out of the universal call to holiness. Yes. Your unique mission is always going to uh, somehow fulfill your responsibility as a baptized Christian in the great to 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 lead the great commission, right? To 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 take the gospel and proclaim it across the world to the ends of the earth, baptizing people in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? That's going to be part of your unique mission. It's never going to cause you to compromise your vocation, mm-hmm. right? The vows that you have made whether you're a priest or a married person or uh, a parent that has young kids or middle-aged kids or old, older adult children, it's never going to cause you to compromise those things are, that, are, that are very much your obvious responsibilities. But what it can do when we start to understand it is it can help us to actually live in those areas better. Mm-hmm. So the thought that my mission pulls me from these things, that's not from God. Mm. Your mission is meant to enhance your experience of those things and inform how you show up in those obligations in life in your great commission in your universal call to holiness yeah i mean i think about our story too like it took us seven years to have avila Mm -hmm. you know we didn't have a child for seven years and and within those seven years we were in ministry we were you know effectively i guess stepping in as spiritual mentors to people in need of that yeah 
Um, spiritual mother, spiritual father. Yes, like yeah. that's the, we would say that it's like okay, it, Lord, if you're not calling us to this ordinary form of, par- yeah. of parenthood, perhaps you're calling us to an extraordinary because we have this desire to be a father and mother and, mm-hmm. and, and, and parents here. And so, but it's all extraordinary, honestly. It's all like even if it's I don't ordinary. yeah I don't mean it to, like so, you know what I mean. But let me finish. Okay, so when I think about people who have five kids. And then I think about my life, which is running a business and doing all this. And we have one child, Mm -hmm. right? Because we never had a baby after that. I'm thinking, I'm looking at these patterns from our life, from our story. And I'm like, Lord, you know what? This makes sense. Mm -hmm. This makes sense. We are running kind of a big company here. I mean, it's It's a growing company. It's a growing company. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of time and demand. And I, I wouldn't have that. Neither one of us would have that. Our I personally would not have that amount of time if I had five children yeah. and I was, you know, doing laundry for five people. Alone. And here's the thing, guys, like it's not for want of trying, tr- like we want to have more kids. Right. It's not like we're trying to avoid a pregnancy now to be kind of, cause we want, this is, this is like, we, we recognize that the purpose of, of marriage is for the rearing and raising of, of children, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's primary. So, but as circumstances have it, we have one child. And it's like, okay, how are we, how are we responding to that? Lord, what do you, how can we look at this circumstance and say, what are you okay, calling us into? Because mm-hmm. now she's at school for seven hours. Yeah. What are we doing during that time? Which is a great school, by the way. I love this school so Love much. you, Donahue. I'm like, I would. Love you, love you, love you. Yes. Anyway. Okay. So let's get back to this. But the reason why I brought that up is, is you can start to understand what your mission is by by looking at patterns throughout your story, mm-hmm. by actually reflecting on on those things and living in that ordinary life, yes. living in like the midst of it, trying to be a saint, you know, trying to be in that universal call to holiness. Yeah, allowing it to form you. A lot of the time people mm-hmm. come to us with frustrations because they may have an understanding of what their mission is or what they think it is but they feel very stuck in their current circumstances and frustrated that they can't give more time to it or more energy to it because they have their other obligations that are pulling them there. This is a big thing that we're going to be helping people to work through in the academy because there's a way that you can receive exactly where you are, grow in patience there. And and folks, the, it, the, the scripture that comes to mind is we may have this mission, we may feel called like we're called to something great, but think about the parable of, of the talents. He said, because you have been faithful in small things, I'm mm. going to give you great responsibilities. And so when we can be present to those small things right now, exactly where we are, and sometimes it, they're great things, right? It's great to be a, a mom or a father and present to your kids, but we can often look at that as a very small thing. Be obedient to it. And when and by by being obedient and faithful in the small things, that's where the Lord starts to create more opportunities for that mission. Mm-hmm. There's one question here that I think is important, Aaron, mm-hmm. that can help you to really start to dial in on unique mission. And it's that question, what do you love? Mm-hmm. What do you love? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it also, I like, what do you know, too? Like, mm-hmm. I think oftentimes when we're like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know my mission. It's like, well, what do you know? You know that you're called to holiness. You know that, like, what state you are in, in life mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you also know that God has never, in the history of the world, given somebody their entire plan in one sitting. <laughs> Like his his mission for them. He's not like, and then you're going to do this and this and this. Like yeah, the blessed of, mother was pondering quite a bit. Right. Think about Mary. It's like a, an angel came to her of all people who I would think would deserve it. Right. But, you know, she's carrying his son. <laughs> she's carrying God. And it's like an angel comes to her. It's like, hey, this is going to happen. She's like, okay, how is that going to happen? And he's like, like this. And then he's like, <laughs> bye. <laughs> You know, like she's like, okay, I mean, I guess now I'm going to be pregnant. I guess I'll ponder. Yes, I'll ponder. I'll I'll move. Yeah. Yeah. So, I I mean, think about even just, wow, that's a huge role, huge mission that God just gave to Mary and he didn't lay the entire thing out for her. He didn't. I love it. So um, that doesn't happen. He is the lamp unto our feet. Another question you can ask yourself, I love this question so much. I just want to get your guys' brains moving on this, but it's if you could pioneer one cause and that you knew would be successful, what would you do? 
it's kind of a different way to ask what do you love, but like also what ex- excites you, what gives you that enthusiasm? What pioneer, what cause would you pioneer around the world or in your hometown? It doesn't have to be something huge. I was talking to somebody recently and she brought up how every time she's around young kids, she loves going to the children's mass. Every time she's around young kids, she she's moved to tears. What? Okay. There's something that's there. Oh there's something that's there. There's that's amazing. I mean, there's, and she just desires to be around these young kids. It's like, okay, that is a little lamp unto our feet. And like, let's, let's take a note of that. Let's enter into our blessed mother's pondering. Let's take that into our pondering. I remember the first time I take, took somebody through a unique call of sanctity, which is one of our things that we were going to be taking people through in the, in the, um, the new economy. Mm-hmm. But she was like, I just really love bringing people to national shrines. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm so glad you, you love that because I don't, not that I don't love shrines, but like, I have no desire to do that, to yeah. like, to set up trips and stuff like that. And I can see the value. Yeah. So going off of what you said earlier with unique design, it's like, you know, not everyone's good at this. It's like, you know, not everyone loves this too. Yeah. yeah. Um, my final question for you guys to ask yourself, this is just a fun question to pray with is, what would be so cool for you to be the patron saint of? <laughs> like, what, what would you be like so excited? You're like, I really love corduroys. <laughs> I don't know. The, pa- patron. the patron saint of novelty t-shirts. <laughs> wow, that'd be so cool. cool. But they have to be clean t-shirts. They can't be, you know. All right, moving on to our final pillar. This is my favorite one. I'm just going to say this is my favorite. Lots of resonance. Lots of resonance with me on this one. And this is actually the unique battle. All of the stuff that we talked about mindset coming up to this point, all of the stuff like custody of the mind, everything, your thoughts lead to your emotions, which lead to actions. All of this was is in the context of the battle. We need to know the battlefield. Mm-hmm. We need to actually know what is what is our responsibility? What is, you know, where's God playing a role here? where's the enemy like what's his voice so yeah and the reason why you need to know it is because there's a battle going on if there was no spiritual battle going on we wouldn't need to worry about this unique design and unique mission would really be all we need like we wouldn't have anything working against those pillars in our life but the reality is we do yeah and so we need to learn how to engage this unique battle so that we can really fulfill that unique mission and live into all the talents, unearth all of those talents, bury nothing in our unique design. Yeah. Yeah. So um, a question that came up for this is how do I know what is mine versus what is the enemy at work in my life? I love that question. It's a great question. It's a really good question. I think behind it, though, there's a, there's like this thought. I don't know how to discern, which could be true. Okay. You might not know how to discern. And so I think... Yeah, I think that's. But I love the I love the acknowledgement yes. that people have that Amen. like it's not all the devil made you do it, right? There's some there's yeah. like okay, what's mine, and then what's the spiritual battle here? Where is it like? How's the enemy showing? Up? How do I discern like the things that I can start doing that are within my control? Mm-hmm. And like, where do I need to bring some of those really strong guns of the church to <laughs> to kind of rebuke, rebuke, renounce within my authority, understanding mm-hmm. the authority structure here as well, and really engage on a spiritual level that battle. Yeah. 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 So I, I, okay. If I had five minutes to explain to somebody, somebody asked me this, how do I know, you know, I guess the rules of engagement when it comes to the spiritual battle, spe- specifically of the mind, sure. because that is an area that is, um, at the core of all that we do. So first we, what we want you to know is that your thoughts influence how you feel. This is not news to you guys. If you guys are not new, if you guys are brand new to us, yeah, maybe this is news, but your thoughts influence how you feel and that influences what you do and what you decide. So the thoughts are the roots. Mm -hmm. They are the core of what you do and what you don't do. Um, They are in your control, your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts are in your control. We get to choose what we adhere to. We get to choose what we want to continue to believe and then we get to choose what not to believe um they are yours which means you're responsible for them and they're optional these are all really good things to know so when whenever we have a little thought that pops up in our head Mm -hmm. is i mean because i know the enemy can tempt us here aaron like how does that factor in here with like 
yes. temptations to kind of indulge in a thought Thank or something you. like that. How does that, how do we distinguish? Yeah. Most temptations come in through our imagination. Okay. And so, so there's like, there's two virtues that we need here. We yeah, need and temptation is one of the primary, the, mo- the most common ways of diabolic influence. Is that right way yes. of saying it? Okay, yes. great. So, I mean, there's a couple things at play. We are weakened. Our intellect is weakened. Our, our will is weakened. Our intellect is darkened through sin. So, a cut out sin, first of all, if you want to actually engage the battle effectively. Um, <laughs> it's like cutting out carbs. No or, carbs. Or just, no sin. <laughs> or just go to confession more, you know, like utilize this amazing, you know, conduit of grace that is, that our church gives to us. Sure. And it's a sacrament of healing. So that's number one. We need to remove sin. Um, number two, custody of the senses and custody of the mind. So these are distinct but they work together. So custody of the senses is just understanding what's coming in through your senses Mm -hmm. and having some kind of guard up for that. Like understanding, oh, I'm a little sensitive to that. Understand like, you know, no porn or anything like that. That's, that is like a complete. That's obvious. I mean, like it's. Right. But even just the music you listen to Mm -hmm. and all of these other things, just be aware of what is coming in through your senses. I'm doing Exodus 90 right now. And that's actually great at that. Yeah. That's one of of the things that the the practices of asceticism is you want to make sure that you're listening to uplifting music is what they say. Mm. All right. So like I, I grew up in the 90s. And tell you what, I love Alice in Chains. I love my grunge music. I love my Stone Temple Pilots and and Pearl Jam and all that, and Nirvana. And they're so depressing. It's it's very emo, <laughs> and it's it's like I can't say that it's uplifting music as much as I have an appreciation for it. And so, it's been um, choosing to kind of leave that out and just have some silence or introduce some Gregorian chants. I love my Hallow app for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, bring some Gregorian chant in or listen to the Vigil Project or even some nice instrumental p- piano music, some classical. I, I, I do start to feel the effects of exposing my senses or guarding my senses, mm. let's put it that way, and to, to things that may be, or may be a little bit toxic versus those things that are more ordered to, uh, to what's true, good, and beautiful. Yeah, I think Exodus 90 is really good at the custody of the senses and kind of like setting somebody up to grow in discipline in that particular virtue. Um, I would say that our lane is custody of the mind. Okay. So that's really where we come in. Our lane at metanoia, you're saying? Yes, yes. Because we can cut these things out, and yes, they will have an effect. Like if we cut out, if we actually have that custody of the the senses, that will have a, a... beneficial effects on the person Mm -hmm. and if you are like i'm cutting this out and all i'm doing is thinking about it nonstop, like okay so we're probably increasing desire for this thing while we're cutting it out and growing in that you know white knuckling moment here yes yep so really where the custody of the mind comes in is understanding okay temptation comes in through the imagination Mm mm-hmm and th- from the imagination, we have the cogitative power, which is we make an association. This is good, bad, pleasurable, not pleasurable, mm-hmm. like really on base base level. Okay. This is, and this is the battlefield right here. Yes. This is, this is the material part of our mind. Um, all of that affects what we, we go to our memory. We find memories that support our cogitative power, like this association that we just made with our cogitative power. And then and then we feel something we mm-hmm. have like our emotion it all happens like in a split second. I'm kind of breaking it up in different pieces, but it's, it all happens together. Mm-hmm. So we have this emotional response and we're like, what just happened? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it happened so fast. We have this things coming through our senses. We have imagination, memory, cognitive power, and then emotion. And, and then we go, what, what the heck just happened? And we, we never can kind of, grab it, capture that thought and slow it down and mm-hmm. bring it what we say through reason. But that is what we teach people how to do is capture that thought. Even when it's coming in, even when we're reflecting back on it. Okay. So this happened this morning. Let's reflect back on it and find out what the thought was mm-hmm. and bring that through reason, bring it, show it like shine truth over it. See if it's true. See if it's good. See if it actually What's the voice of it? Like, what is mm-hmm. the tonality of this particular thought? Um, what is the emotion that comes from it? Is it 
And is it a reasonable emotion? Does mm-hmm. it make sense? Is it appropriate? Is it useful? Is it good? Is it true? And these are like all of the ways that we um, at Mennonite Catholic, we, we can kind of in- help everyone out there engage the custody of their mind, which mm-hmm. is, I think, I've and I've listened to probably hundreds of hours of exorcists speak on this stuff. <laughs> and every single one of them talks about this. Custody mm-hmm. of the mind, having this discipline of your mind. Think about what you're thinking about. Like you have to understand what you're thinking about because you can't discern any of that if you haven't captured a thought. Yeah. If you haven't actually been like, oh, it's that thought that's kind of driving me over here. Yes. Yes. Okay. So that custody of the mind, yeah, the, 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 the demonic can kind of tempt you a little bit, presents a, presents a thought to you. But if you don't understand custody of the mind, you might say, oh my gosh, I'm thinking this thought and therefore I have all these judgments about yourself. Or it's just like, no, the, the demonic can kind of like yes. introduce something and then you get to choose whether or not you're going to in, indulge in it. Okay. Yes. And, we, and we, we can, we can look at the fruits and, and assess if we've indulged in that temptation or not. Okay. Yes. But the more we can start to do what Aaron said, take a look at the thought and then own it, mm-hmm. but discern it. Right. And then exercise our own agency over it as to whether or not we're going to continue to think on that or we're going to choose to follow what St. Paul says and think on these things, whatever's good, Mm -hmm. whatever's beautiful. Ponder these things. Yes. Yeah. So back to the battlefield. Okay. Okay. What do we do? First practical thing that you can do is what we call a thought recon. Cool. And it's really just getting all your thoughts down on paper you're putting space between you and your thoughts, and then you can like circle the ones that you would call, I guess, red light thoughts, right? Like yep. they make you stop and you're like, whoa, hmm. I don't know if I like that I'm thinking that. I don't know if that's from God. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's, yeah. So if there's any of those questions that come up, circle that and then come to our academy and learn what to do with it. I mean, and also we have like a bajillion other you know, podcasts on what to do with those. Yeah. Don't do this by yourself. Okay. Like this is, this is, this academy folks is a place where you can learn how you advance the kingdom uniquely through your unique battle, your unique design and your unique mission like that. That's what is. And it's not something that you just kind of take an assessment and you figure it out. This is something where you come in as a student of this over time. And by what we're the, the guidance that we provide and the exercise that we have, it's, it's entering into how you ponder these things and allow with God and allow that to mature your understanding to mature over time. Mm. And it's amazing how just a couple of, you know, weeks that initially just starting to ponder this stuff, there's a lot of great insights that can come through. But when you start to really get in a habit of pondering, right? Let's look to our blessed mother. She's a good example, right? Get in the habit of pondering, you can start to really see this flowering over time and then it becomes easier to discern God's will because it's not going to be deviating from all of these revelations that he's been giving to you over time and all of these fruits that he's been giving in your life over time. It's, but rather it's going to be inviting you into the next level mm-hmm. of experiencing that. Uh, and eyes not seen, ears not heard, nor has it entered the heart of man what God has planned for those who love him. So like, I can't tell you what that next level looks like, but I know there is a next level and it's awesome. So, uh, and we want to help you kind of just discern that on the way. Cool. Yes. Yes. So come check out our new academy. We also have an app. I don't know when we're going to be driving. This is next week, right? Well, this so. is going to be dropping next week, but that, so like you can't download the app, but there's a free version of that. There will be a free version of that. Everything's going to be available on February 1st, 2024. All right. So Get you go ready. To Catholic, Catholic you can download the free Join the essentials part of the community. There's going to be a lot of prayer that's going on in there. We're going to do occasional Lexio Divina calls, prayer intention boards. There's some basic uh, kind of just unique design, mm-hmm. unique mission, unique uh, battle type courses that are going to be in there. But you'll be able to jump in there. And folks, one of the things I can guarantee, there's going to be other guides that are in there. We've got our certified coaches. Yep. They're going to have access to this. Our resident coaches are going to be there. You got questions, just throw it out there. We're going to be doing something special for Lent here as well. Uh, in our level one area of the of the academy here. So that's like when you become a student, you want to really get serious about diving into your unique mission, your unique battle, your unique design. Let's tell them how much it costs. So the first level is free. Yes. Zero. Zero dollars. Zero dollars. All right. Level one, eight ninety nine a month here, folks. Eight ninety nine a month. That is nine dollars. Or eighty nine ninety nine a is, year. Is that like, like two Starbucks coffees? I, I depends on how much you're tipping, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but like I, I just bought a Americana for like 
four fifty. Yeah, with okay. a tip today. So there's so like, two yeah. of those. Yeah, but like this is, we wanted to make this so that it was something. It was very easy for somebody to be able to come in and start to start to grow in their uh, their three pillars here. Okay. And then there's then level two of the academy. We'll, we'll probably talk about this more in another yeah. podcast. But level two is when we recognize, okay, first you're a student, but at some point you really desire to share this with somebody else. Maybe you're a parent and you want to help your kids become a, a student if they're a unique design, or a teacher, unique mission, your battle. Or a minister or a, like yep. a, a somebody that's that's a, a trainer or somebody that is, uh, that's a focus missionary or something like mm-hmm. this. And you want to be able to jump in. We've got things at the mentor level that are really about, okay, you're continuing to do your work because every mentor is still a student, right? And every student eventually becomes a mentor. But at the mentor level, we're really helping you to guide other people along the way and uh, mm-hmm. develop some of those core mentorship skills. So we're stoked here, guys. Um, yeah. We can't wait to meet. And the, the community is going to be amazing. Yeah. Come the join us. are awesome. Join us, you guys. Join us. It's going to be fun. And even if, even if you do it for one month, that's $9. It might just change your life, though. Just saying. Cool. All right. We'll see you in the Academy. Ta-ta. God bless. Hey, thanks for sticking with us in the Catholic Coaching Podcast. If you like what you heard, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you again.